at Arbor Freight. And uh, I have altered it a little bit so that it would actually function for all these uh, different types of welding. The first thing you have to do is you have to put some really good tires on this car. This is a fairly cheap car, just made of tin, uh, folded tin basically. Uh, it's about $35 on sale at Harbor Freight, and the wheels could not support um, what you do with a welding car. So I got these large uh, 8 inch by 2 inch uh, fully rotating swivel wheels, rubber. Every one has a lock, and you can then orientate this cart in a small space like a garage. Uh, but the tin couldn't support the wheels nor the weight. So uh, you'll see close-up video of our photos of this. There's actually uh, plate steel here and here, about eighth inch thick steel plates to reinforce the bottom to hold the, uh, essentially the, the full weight of the cart and, and on top of these wheels. So um, the last thing I want to show with the cart upside down is this hole down here. Uh, you'll notice that the top, this is the actual top of the cart, and uh, I've cut out the part of the cart's cart so that I can have a fire box or fire trap for when I uh, am cutting, uh, I can actually have all the uh, uh, slag and stuff come down in here. Zoom in. What? Can I zoom in? Uh, if you want, yeah. yeah. Alex is zooming in. <laughs> eh. Uh, and essentially this is some, some eighth inch strap steel and some hangers. I'll have some close-ups of this too. And the reason this is, is one, it reinforces this hole, and two, a firebox, an actual fully enclosed firebox, hangs from this, uh, from these brackets here that are, bol are bolted on, uh, catching essentially all the, uh, the slag. So none of it gets to the bottom of the cart, nor does it get out you know, where you start a fire in your garage or, or, or actually get in your, on your feet and burn your toes. I'll flip it over and then we'll go over the rest of the assembly. Okay, so you can see it uh, moves around quite nicely. Uh, this is a standard handle on this side for moving it around. Um, the fire, the cut, cut off of the fire trap is here, the fire box. There's another, uh, it looks like a handle over here, but this is actually a type of hinge, and you'll see later this hinge comes in handy, and it's put on with just some uh, conduit strapping, and this is just a piece of conduit. Um, First thing we're gonna we're gonna put into this is is I want to have bricks essentially uh, fire brick down in here for when I'm doing my welding with the oxygen acetylene. But the brick uh, falls down too far; it actually goes too far in, and I want to have a nice double surface for working on stuff. So what I took is I measured up uh, some standard tubing or. or uh, basically square tubing, rectangular tubing, and I welded up a grid that fits in there and it serves two purposes as a grid. One, it keeps the bricks higher. So now when I put my fire brick in, my fire brick is nice and level with the top for doing uh, my oxygen acetylene welder. And the other thing is it's a grid, so it still allows slag to pass through this side, which you're going to see quite quickly. That's very important. Uh, as quickly as possible, I will put the brick back in. By the way, this isn't real fire brick. It's, it's recycled chimney brick. Not really good for oxygen acetylene welding. I'm going to replace this with real fire brick someday, but actually I find that it serves a purpose. For, for me right now. And the wheels are very important because, as you can see, the, the bricks are pretty heavy. Just a few more. And we have a bed. Six minutes and it's looking good so far. Okay. So this section is something for oxygen acetylene on this brick as well as a little bit here, but there's still a big hole here going down. 
And that's for cutting, either with the oxygen acetylene torch or with the plasma torch. I welded up some strap steel, uh, about maybe a little more of an eighth inch, and probably about an inch and a half wide. And I just tap welded it together. It's sacrificial uh, uh, material for laying stuff on as you're cutting. And that lays in there. And if you're cutting something like a coyote or whatever I happen to be cutting, that lays, you cut, the slag goes down. Well, you don't want that slag going down and in there and, and splattering on your legs. So I built a fire trap. What this is, it's a, another Harbor Freight cart. I, I don't recommend you do this out of a Harbor Freight cart, but I had a, this small red Harbor Freight cart. I didn't like it, it was too small and it didn't serve my needs. So I chopped it up in several ways, which you'll see in the photos. And uh, basically uh, metal screwed it together with tin sides uh, to make the exact size and height of a fire trap box uh, for my cutting. And I put some angle, uh, angle iron collar around the top. I can, uh, see lots of slag and scrapping now. Uh, essentially, I just made an angle iron top and I uh, uh, welded it together and put some uh, screws in to hold the top. And this collar is what the actual fire trap hangs from on these brackets that are basically angle iron and strap seal down here. Yes, Alex? Uh, show them where these go. Oh, I will, right when I get to the end. Those are the okay. last things I put on. Thank you, though. Okay, so, this you can empty anytime you want, and it just slides on this hanger down here. And you center it in there, and all the slag goes down um, in here. And as you see, it won't get down into your stuff that you store down here, nor will it get on your toes. And you can have this in your garage, and and not worry about starting a fire in your house or your house or anything. Now, this would be pretty close to all you needed, except for I do MIG welding too, and this isn't appropriate for MIG welding, which is where this hanger hinge comes in. Alex, over here. Can I'm, you center it over here? I don't have a shirt. That's, no, can you just turn the camera? <laughs> so you can see this? Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, I can. Okay, this is a, uh, a quarter inch of steel. It weighs about, oh, I don't know, maybe 105 pounds or 110 pounds. Wow. It's very flat and, and, and very heavy. And this is for, uh, for MIG welding. And what I did is I essentially just uh, uh, used the MIG welder and actually welded this hinge mechanism here out of just some tubing. Uh, try not to overheat this when you do that. Don't use just small, rosebud weldings here and there essentially just little tack welds uh, and don't overheat this cool it frequently you don't want to warp it as i have slightly by welding too continuously on on this uh, uh hinge and essentially these hinges allow you to uh, just hang in here and it hangs there on that uh, condo you're done dad what it's been 10 minutes oh that's okay um, we'll have to, we'll have to edit it, I guess. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, I think I'm limited to 10 minutes of video on YouTube. So. 10, yeah, 10 minutes. All right, okay. So, uh, what you said to do is you want to kind of do a mission, lift this up. It's best to put these brakes on. You can put all four brakes on if you, uh, if you're really pounding and banging. There. Ow. And then you can take the brake off when you're done. And there you have a nice flat surface for your MIG welding, fire trap, converts quickly for gas and cutting.